we're going to cover how to find two numbers with a given product and sum. This will be useful when factoring trinomials. So we're just going to practice this one piece of it. For instance, find two numbers whose product is 40 and whose sum is 13. So we're trying to find two numbers that when you multiply them together you get 40 but when you add the two numbers you get 13. Now of course you could try doing this algebraically uh, that's harder than going ahead and just doing some um, simple problem solving here. So first of all see if you could figure it out on your own. Okay did anybody come up with 8 and 5? So the answer to this one happens to be 8 and 5 since 8 times 5 is 40 and 8 plus 5 is 13. So some of you may have been able to just come up with that and anybody who could do that without doing any system that's just great. But I'm going to show you how you can systematically find two such numbers if they exist. And we're finding two integers really when I say numbers so we're not doing any problems with fractions etc. Okay. Okay, so basically this is just a puzzle. You're trying to find two numbers and you want and if some of you might easily guess the two numbers, but some people have trouble doing that. So this is a systematic way of finding the two numbers if they exist. So keep in mind we're looking for two integers, not fractions, so they might be positive or negative. So we just did find two numbers if their product is 40 and their sum is 13. Well, let's say you just can't come up with it at the top of your head by guessing. So here's another way of doing it. I'm going to say I want their, I'm just going to remember PS, you know, like at the end of a letter you write PS. So I'll just say the product is 40 and the sum is 13. All right, so there's a lot of numbers that are up to 13, but there's only so many numbers that multiply out to be 40. So we're just going to, write down all the possible numbers that multiply out to be 40 starting with the number 1. Does 1 go into 40? Yes. So it could be 1 times 40. I'm listing the two numbers so that's why I'm using a comma. And then we've got, let's see, does 2 go into 40? Yes. 2 goes into it 20 times. Does 3 go into it? No. Does 4 go into it? Yes. Does 5 go into it? Yes. Does 6? No. Does 7? You actually don't have to go as far as 7 or higher, and here's how you know. If you take 7 and multiply it by itself, another square it, if it's bigger than 40, that means you don't need to test it. So the furthest we really have to go is up to 6. So this gives me four possibilities, but we want the sum to be 13. Now, that means the sum is positive. Anytime you add two numbers, if you're going to end up with a positive, the positive must go in front of the larger number. So the larger number must be positive. Since the product is positive, the numbers must be the same sign. So the smaller number must also be positive in this case. Now we see which one has the sum of positive 13. And here it is. So that's sort of a systematic way of just writing out the only possibilities and then seeing if it's there. Okay, so here's another example. Find two numbers whose product is 72 and whose sum is, I'm sorry, whose product is 72 and whose sum is negative 22. All right, so first of all, you might just try and see if you can guess that on your own, but if not, let's go ahead and do the same systematic method. So I want the product to be positive 72 and the sum is negative this time, negative 22. So we're gonna start off just by writing all numbers that when you multiply them together you get 72. So you start off with 1, 1 goes into 72, so we've got 1 and 72. Does 2 go into 72? Yeah, since it's even, 36. Now I'm going to give you a little hint how to do the rest of these. Does 3 go into 72? Actually you just have to look over here and see if 3 goes into any numbers on the right. And it goes into 36, which is probably easier than doing 3 into 72 for some of you. If you could do 3 into 72, you could write that down, but watch this. 3 goes into 36 12 times, and then you do 12 times this another number 2, so it's 24. I do the same thing for if 4 goes into the number. 4 goes into 24, right? 
So it goes 6 times, times 3 is 18. You could have also said, well, 4 goes into 36 9 times, and 9 times 2 gives you 18. Okay, does 5 go into any of these numbers? No. Does 6 go into any of these numbers? Yes. 6 into 18 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. All right, 7. 7 doesn't go into any of those numbers. Does 8 go into any of those numbers? Yes, 8 times 9. And when you get where you have two consecutive numbers, you're basically halfway through the list, you're done. Because if you tried 9, 9 squared is already bigger than 72. So these are all the possibilities of numbers that multiply out to 72. Now I've got to figure out the signs. Since the sum is negative, the bigger number must be negative. When you add two numbers, if you're going to get a negative, the bigger number must be negative. Just think about that. Okay, so if the bigger number is negative and their product is positive 72, the other number must also be negative because you need to multiply two negatives to get a positive. So the other number is also negative. All right, now you look through the list and say which one has the, the magical sum of negative 22. And there it is negative 4 and negative 18. So some of you may have gotten that just right off the bat. You can come up with it in your head. Awesome, that's great. But if not, this is sort of a systematic approach. Okay, so we've got a product of negative 12 and a sum of positive 4. So let's list out the possibilities of two numbers that have a product of 12. We have 1 and 12. 2 times 6, 3 times 4. All right, the sum is positive, so the plus sign goes in front of the larger number. And now I want the product to be negative. So if one of the numbers is positive, I'm going to have to multiply the other number by a negative in order to get a negative 12. So those are my possibilities. All right, now which one has the sum of positive 4? You got it right here. Okay, here's another one where both the product and the sum are negative numbers. So go ahead and put this on pause and see if you can come up with two numbers that when you multiply them together you get negative 70, but when you add them together you get negative 9. Okay, so let's start out here. Numbers that go into 70. 1 and 70, 2 and 35. Does 3 go into any of those numbers? No. Does 4 go into any of those numbers? No. How about 5? Yes. 5 goes into 35, 7, and 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, does 6 go into in, in any of these numbers? No. Does 7? Yes. 7 times 10. 8? No. And 9 squared is already too big. So these are all the possibilities. Okay, next look at the sum. Sum is negative bigger number than must be negative. And let's see, I want the product to be negative, so these have to be opposite signs, so the other number also has to be positive. Okay, so which one of these have a sum of negative 9? There it is. 5 and negative 14. Get the hang of it? You have to be very, very careful with your signs. For instance, let's say this problem would be I'd find a product of 70 and a sum of negative 9. We would start out exactly the same. You list two numbers that multiply out to be 70, so they're exactly the same ones I have over here on the left. All right. And they're still negative because the sum is negative 9, correct? All right, but here's the difference. You want a product of 70, which means the signs have to be the same to get a positive product. So these numbers would all have to be negative. And now you're looking for two numbers in that list that add up to negative 9 and there are none. Okay, so there's no solution. There's no two such numbers exist. 
So sometimes you're unable to find two numbers. You could do all the trial error you want, but it didn't work. So in this case, a, a lot of people accidentally write the 5 and negative 14, but that wouldn't work because 5 and negative 14, for instance, multiply out to be negative 70, not positive 70. So be extremely careful with that.